So my name is Paul Smeets, and I'm still thinking about the paper of Nadja, actually. So um, uh, when I think about another another application of, of of this, to come back to Julian's question, there is this uh, there is this idea of uh, earning to give. And for example, what they do is they go to poker players uh, who play these big tournaments where they can win uh, 1 million euros. And then they ask the poker players, okay, if you win, how much of the money do you want to donate to an effective charity? And that's actually sort of an implication of, uh, of what Nacha was showing, but then for the positive side. So if people win, great, then they want to they wanna do good and, uh, and, 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 and want to give. So uh, yeah, very fascinating. Um, but let me talk now about uh, uh, this uh, paper, which is also about essentially are people willing uh, uh, to give money to do good, but then not uh, to charity, but with their pension money. So do people put their pension savings on the table to promote sustainability? And it's, uh, it's joint work with uh, Rob Bauer, who you uh, already uh, so yesterday, and also uh, Tobias Ruoff, uh, my former PhD student who actually uh, finished this, uh, this spring. And uh, the paper is called Get Real. Uh, and it's called Get Real because what I'm going to show you is not hypothetical choices, but it's actually a pension fund who really got real and outsourced the choice of sustainable investments to its participants. So it's direct democracy, which I find very funny to talk about here in the, in the UK, right? <laughs> so you can think of that in many different ways, but I'm going to show you that the direct democracy can work out under the right conditions. And I'm also going to show you why I think it's actually important to use this direct democracy when it comes to sustainability in, in pension funds. So the pension fund, before the study, committed to the outcome. And that is what we communicated to the participants. So that was binding. It's not even an advisory uh, uh, referendum. It was a binding referendum. And this fits in, um, into a recent development whereby uh, the European Commission uh, installed a high-level expert group and, and they said actually that institutions should know, uh, financial institutions should know the preferences of their clients when it comes to sustainability. But then of course the question is how should you ask investors? And what we say here, well, you should do that in a real choice and not simply a hypothetical choice and I will motivate it also. So. Um, when, when people watch TV, and uh, maybe you sit at home with your husband or your wife, and then uh, uh, you, you see uh, how, how animals get slaughtered in a horrible way, and they say, oh, this is so bad, I'm not going to buy this anymore. And then, uh, uh, and then you don't do it, but your neighbor, when he is in the, in the supermarket, he will just buy the cheap meat. It's, uh, because it's uh, four dollars instead of uh, two dollars, so ooh, no. So the talk and the action is is very different. People say, "Oh, I I I, I want to have the good meat," but then once they are in the supermarket, it's only about five to ten percent of the consumers who then actually pay more for the ecological meat. So you cannot just take what people say. Another nice example is with the carbon uh, uh, offsetting in an airplane. If you ask people in a survey whether they want to offset, yeah. The majority says yes. When you look at the actual data, only a few percent of people actually offset their CO2. So talk and action are two different things. So we need to look at real behavior. And just to put stuff into perspective, this is the amount of money uh, that is in the total economy. Uh, I heard a different number yesterday. So, uh, well, I, I don't know which one is right. I, I didn't uh, count all the, the euros myself. But um, this is the amount of money that is in pension funds. And this is the amount of money in defined benefit funds. 22 trillion. Now, when I look at uh, what the United Nations write in their uh, 2015 report for uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, we need about 5 to 7 trillion. And so that's around 15.5% of the money that is in pension funds. So when you think about that, then pension funds and their investments just play a tremendously important role when it comes to reaching the Sustainable Development Goals. 
So if we could actually get 15% of that money to effective sustainable investment, that's still a big question, but uh, that's something I'm not going to talk about today. But then we essentially would have enough money to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030, which I heard at the beginning of the conference yesterday, that should be the goal. So what we did here is um, we, we worked with Pension Funds, the Thai Handel. It's a, a, a pension fund for the Dutch retail sector. It's, uh, it's quite a large one because essentially all the people that work in, uh, in retail stores, for example, they are part of this pension fund. And it's a sort of a hybrid defined benefit plan. So the participants, they are obliged to save with this pension plan. They cannot make any choices up until now, because now we are going to give them a choice, but before they had no choice. But there is still a, an element of variation in their amount of pay, so it's not a divine benefit as you have it in some uh, US places like in Illinois where they now are in, in big problems because they made hard promises and now there is not enough money, the state will have to pay it. That's not the case here. So here it's a sort of a defined benefit, but there is payments contingent on how the investment results are going to be. So for example, the correction for inflation called indexation only happens if there is enough money. And you can imagine if inflation is 2% per year and you don't get a correction for 10 years, that has a big influence on how much money the beneficiary is going to get. So they got a, a majority vote um, choice. And that's all what we explained to participants in, in, in easy language. We had this checked by professional language so that the, you have all these levels of complexity of language. This was simple language that we used that was checked for that. And uh, if the majority of people say, I want more sustainability, then the fund will do that. If they want less sustainability, they get less sustainability. Very simple. So the rules were clear to the participants. We also checked whether the rules were clear. So we had all kind of comprehension questions. These were the three sustainable development goals that the pension fund was already uh, focusing on. Uh, because as you can uh, see in the Netherlands, almost all pension funds are already doing something when it comes to sustainability. That's not so surprising, but the question now is, well, they do something, but should that actually be more than what the pension fund was doing before? And the question that we therefore asked, uh, and we wanted, again, to keep it really, really simple, uh, as opposed to the Brexit vote, which was a whole package of stuff for people with absolutely no idea. Here we only ask one thing, and that is, do you want to add a fourth sustainable development goal? And that was all. Very simple question. And then we, we explained also to the participants that that has consequences, and mainly two consequences. Number one is the pension fund will then expand it's focused on sustainable investments. So it's not that they are going to do the same amount of sustainable investments, but just spread over four goals now, uh, instead of three, yeah, that would still not matter. No, they are going to do extra stuff. Plus, and that's what we made very clear to the participants, it might imply that it comes at a financial cost. It's not necessary because we don't really know how the financial performance is when we go for four or three, we asked the participants, and I will show you how they think about it themselves, but what we told them is it might be financially costly. And again, it's their pension money, so we have to be open and tra transparent about that. And here is the exact question that we gave to the participants, and then they could give one out of uh, three answers. They could say, yes, I want to, to add this fourth sustainable development goal. I don't want it, or I don't have an opinion. Now, what is the result? And usually what I do is I ask people in the audience uh, uh, to, to raise their hand and to tell me what they expect, but you could already read the abstract, so that's not so fun anymore. Um, but, but what usually people tell me is that, uh, yeah, maybe around 20%, 30% will say yes, because the idea is that once people really have to put the money on the table, well, then they don't do it anymore. But that's not what we see. We actually see that two-thirds of the participants who are aware of the consequences, 
and we check that with the comprehension questions, they check the box, I want more sustainability in my pension. I really want to add this false sustainable development goal. And what you can see is there's actually only a, a group of 10% that explicitly says that they do not want to do that. And the, other, the other group just, they don't know. Okay. But the, the big majority says, yes, I want to add more sustainable um, development goals to this portfolio. Now, um, the question then is, what is that driven by? Uh, so is it driven by people's financial expectations? So it might just be that these participants say, oh, but sustainability is good for profits. And it's a story that, uh, that many fund managers like to tell, so maybe that's also what the participants believe. Uh, but it could also be that it's rather driven by people's social preferences and whether that's then warm glow or altruism, that's something I'm not going to talk about uh, today. And uh, this, this is an interesting topic in itself, but we, we just say it's any form of social preferences which we are going to, to measure with a validated uh, survey scale uh, that has been published in the, in the QJE. Just to keep it, again, very simple. So, um, first of all, what returns do these participants actually expect when we move from three sustainable development goals to four sustainable development goals? And again, somebody in the panel yesterday said that um, it's people always expect higher returns. That's not what we see here. That's also, by the way, not what I saw in the Journal of Finance uh, paper. Uh, so um, you, you see here a, a distribution. A large group of the, the participants actually believes there is they have just no idea what to believe. Uh, but um, the, the rest is sort of really divided. Uh, so the, 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 the most people believe, oh, it, it, no difference in return. And then there's an equal group who believes it's better for returns than, than it's less good for returns. And then an interesting question is, when we now look at these different subgroups, and so we are going to, to focus on the people who uh, expect lower returns, do they still want to invest sustainably? That's important. And what about the people who don't know? Because if I'm uncertain and my pension money is on the table, oh, maybe then I should be careful. But actually, that's not at all the case. So we, we do see that, yes, higher return expectations, then you are more likely to go for sustainability. That's not so surprising. But even in the groups where uh, people expect lower returns or they actually expect that they have no idea, then there is still a majority who votes for more sustainability. So in line with the idea that even if people uh, believe that it's costly, they are still willing to put their pension money on the table. So then the, uh, uh, the social uh, preference part. So I'm just going over this very quickly. So. What is your takeaway from this is if this coefficient here on social preferences is one, then it has no effect. But what you can clearly see, it's far above one. And, and that means that people with stronger social preferences, they are more likely to uh, vote for more sustainable development goals in their pension. So it shows that it's not driven by financial return expectations, but it's driven for social preferences. By the way, here we also put in time preferences that Ola mentioned, and they also uh, matter. So people who are more patient, uh, who are more long-run oriented, they are also more likely to vote for four sustainable development goals. So last thing I want to, uh, to, to show you is, uh, I, I think, something that is quite important, because whatever question you are going to ask people, and also think about this again in the context of the, the EU regulation coming up. If financial institutions are forced to ask their participants, then it's crucial how they are going to ask this. So what we did is we asked the questions in different ways to see how stable are these preferences or, or are these preferences just going to change whenever I'm going to change the way I ask people. And, um, and, and what we did is we, we said, okay, we really want to look for something in, in the way we answer the question that has uh, been shown before to matter. So what we do is we change the default. So what I showed you before 
is that uh, the standard situation was the fund focuses on three sustainable development goals. Now, would you like to add a fourth one? And we move in this other group of participants to the exact opposite. So what we said is the fund is considering to go for four sustainable development goals, but if you want, you can actually get rid of one. So we flip the argument, and what you see with, um, with, when it comes to organ donations, this has a huge influence. So if you have countries where, by default, you are registered as an organ donor, many more people are an organ donor than in countries where the default is that you're not an organ donor and you actively have to sign up. So it matters a great deal, which shows that the preferences for organ donations are not very strong, because by just framing it a little bit different, I get huge amounts of different results. But what we see here is actually the opposite. So we see it has absolutely no effect. So no matter whether we make the default three going to four, or we make the default four going to three, it's exactly the same results. And this shows that the results that we found here are very robust. So people have quite clear preferences for sustainable investments. We don't steer them easily from one side to the other side. So, um, uh, last thing, last thing, because we talk about elections, I, I really have to show you this because I think it's uh, very interesting that we, um, first of all, want to check that there is no bias in, in the participants because we invite all these pension fund participants, but maybe you say, yeah, Paul, but only the ones who really care about sustainability, they answer. That's not what we see. So what we did is a bit of a trick. So we, uh, we asked people the the party they voted for, and then we, we of course know from the, the national elections data the true distribution. And what you can see is there is it's pretty cl uh, uh, close to each other. So it's not all the people who voted for the Green Party, for example, who then take part in our survey, but also we relate actually people's voting uh, in the elections to our outcomes to see are these results externally valid? Do people, when they, they make a choice for their pension, vote in the same way as when they, they vote for the national elections. And here again we get to our, uh, our uh, um, multinomial regression. And here you see that that is the case. So we, we see that the people who support parties that score higher on sustainability in their elections are also the ones who put the money on the table when it comes to their pension. So that um, uh, brings me to the, to the end of the story. So to, to summarize this, when I, when I look at this European Commission uh, regulation that is coming up, I think the, the, the paper shows two things. First of all, it is possible to ask clients whether they want sustainability or not, in contrast to sometimes what I hear from uh, uh, board members who say, ah, this is difficult and uh, that, that's just not true. You can't do it. You just have to explain it well to participants. And the second point I, I would like to mention is that, in, in my opinion at least, it's going to be important that you give those participants a real decision. Because these hypothetical answers, they could really lead to, uh, uh, yeah, to big biases in the results. So that's it from uh, my side, and I'm looking forward to your questions.